So I, I think there's a, um, there's a misconception out there when, when you look at, again, you know, not to beat up too much, but when you look at, at market cap weighting, let's take the S&P 500. People think they're in a very broadly diversified representative basket of, of U.S. large cap or even the U.S. equity market. And in reality, there's a tremendous concentration in those indices. Um, the S&P 500, the top weighting is Apple. Apple has a higher weighting than the bottom 104 stocks combined. And the top 10%, the top 50 names of the S&P 500 have uh, almost, I think, 48% of the total weight, so almost as much as the next 450. Uh, not only that, because we've had such a run in this FANG trade, the uh, exposure to those technology names and those biggest names is far greater than it's ever been before. So I think some of the diversification benefits that people assume that they're getting with market cap weighting, they're really not, not anymore. So you have to think about how do I slice up, how do I break up my, my exposure within each a asset class? And that is the portfolio construction process. You can do it by optimizing based on historical returns, but if you do it that that way and you don't look forward and you don't say, you know what, I have a strong momentum bias because I'm, I'm cap weighted or I have these other uh, exposure risks that may not have uh, you know, caused any uh, empirical damage to your portfolio in the past five years. We're certainly coming off a great period. If you don't consider those, those issues going forward, then I think uh, you have more risk to your portfolio and your portfolio construction process than a lot of people uh, are aware.